Hello, this is Eric of NotBios Tech and Reviews, and welcome to my review of the Lee and Lee Unifan SL INF120 RGB. And this is one of many different fans that are reviewed with a three pack, with a hub, and I've also reviewed the Thermal Take SWA Fan EX12. Now let's unbox. One of the first things we're presented with is this thank you card with Chinese writing on the backside and a couple of QR codes. Here we have a contents list. Hmm, and also how to connect this. So that is nice to have. I'll connect three software instructions. So this will help you find out how to use the software and how these fans work. These two ends will not connect together. We have to go from the other side where there's pins against the flat side. And there's only one way to connect it. Right now we are the wrong way around. It won't go in. So I have to flip it the other way as we can see right here. Then we have to push it into place, which may require both hands. But there we are. And you can actually push that front end forward or backwards and that will either lock it into place or unlock it. Now let's grab the other fan and connect these two together. Flat end against pin end. If you do otherwise it won't work. Now we're going to slide into those little grooves on the bottom and slide it together. And that is how simple it is to attach both of these fans together. And now let's connect the third fan together with the first and second. Just like so. Perfect. And we can see it's all lined up with the shiny ends and the top of the hubs. But what if we put the wrong way around? We flip it the other way. Will this connect? Okay, and not quite lined up. Here's one of our adapter cables and this is a RGB. Not all motherboards have this connection, so be mindful of what your motherboard has. And this is a fan header. So it monitors our RPM of our fans. And this right here goes to our hub. USB connection and this one goes to the motherboard side. And this side here is micro USB. Now looking at our hub we'll see these connections. This is to connect to serial ATA. Really nice to have this unlike the Thermaltake SWA fan. The X12 which does not include this, where I had to buy an accessory. Well, this one includes this. Good job. After having spent the better part of my day being really annoyed with this connection, I realized that one is for RGB alone. My fans weren't turning. And the other one was for RGB with the fans. And we don't need both connected. What? So if your fans are not turning, but your RGB is on, it might be that you just need to change which are the two connectors. Now here we have a splitter. So we can actually have two different fans connected the same hub port four different spots but we can connect only a total of eight fans to this hub because we have a power limitation of 29 watts maximum. And per section on the hub we can connect up to four fans that we can control. So a total of eight fans would be two spots filled or we can even do two, 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 and two to make the total of eight. Now let's get this fan connected and powered on and see how this looks. Here's our view from the front of these fans and let's go to the side view. Super cool looking and to the back view of these fans. Of course we want to see what it looks like in the case and one thing we'll notice is these slide off super easy. So let's show you how easy. Just like that. That's probably the biggest annoyance of these before you have it set up. Once you have a couple of screws in they'll hold into place but yeah no support here from falling out. Here's how the fans look without the front of my case on. Here's how the fans look with the front case of my Corsair 2000D. And here's how the fans looked flipped the other way around. And with the case on. 
And here is the L Connect 3 software to use with these fans. We have the system, that's my computer setup. And we have our system resources that tells us our drive storage, how full it is, and usage of our CPU, GPU, and RAM. And if I go down here, I can also see what's set up. So right here, we can see that it says start stop on my controller and I can change our fan curve to whatever I like. So I can click here, here, or wherever I want and then press apply and we can set our fan profile. Our lighting right here for different controllers. The only one I'm using is right here. And we can see my fan RPM right here. Port 1 doesn't even have anything connected, so I don't understand why it shows an RPM. This might be reading our CPU. Our device, and here's where I set my fans. So if I wanted to get rid of one and I just want to choose two to be lit up, here we go. And then I can just light it up again. Right now we're on rainbow. I'm just going to select zero speed. Does seem to be moving still, and I'll select 25%. And let's just go all the way to 100%. And for the fun, it, let's change our brightness to 50% and see the effect it has. And now back to 100% and back to say 5% and apply. And let's change our direction. Okay, let's set normal. And now let's check out our other effects. Rainbow Morph, Static Color, so I can choose whatever color I want on here, Breathing, Meteor, Run Away is right here, this is Run Away. And that sums up what we have for lighting. Now I did find a flaw with the software, at least on my system. If I were to say select something else and then I want to zinc to my motherboard lighting, at least in the case of my MSI board, if I try to click to on, a lot of time it'll just freeze up and I can't do a darn thing. So look at this, I can't do anything. Sometimes it will eventually do something. Now, if you've seen the other reviews, I mentioned about the double-sided sticky tape, which keeps on falling off on most situations, but Lee and Lee, they put a magnet here. And for a lot of cases, there's metal. So sticking to metal with not just double-sided sticky tape, but with a magnet to hold it even better, that was an awesome choice. And so far, the only company that made that choice, a little higher cost, but in my situation, I consider it very worthwhile. Who wants a hub that's falling down or you have to install it at the bottom of your case just to have something sticking properly? We're starting at 500 RPM as we can actually hear the fans right now. I'm about a foot away as I tested on my Corsair fans last time. Now let's listen to the science. I'll go from 500 to 1000 to high speed to maximum speed. Once we get to about high, the fans are going to get pretty loud. The center hubs all have a bit of a look of wobbling to it. Doesn't affect the functionality any, as far as I see, but it's just a matter of visuals. With the fans flipped, we don't really see that wobble anymore. However, we don't have protection against cables hitting the fan blades. So the question is, what are my thoughts on the Lee and Lee Unifan SLINF 120 RGB? Well, my thoughts are, consider subscribing and help this channel grow. If you're subscribing right now, and if you are already subscribed, then you are awesome. When it comes down to these fans, they are very silent at low RPM. 
The effects look pretty darn cool. Not many of them to speak of. Overall, this is more compatible for fitting into cases because of the low profile connection. How about the V2? Well, there are more connectors that's more likely to break. However, it can secure better for the V2. But the mirror image on this, I think, in my opinion, looks cooler. This requires an ARGB header, and not all motherboards have an ARGB header, especially the more affordable ones. So please look up in your motherboard manual if this is compatible. An alternate option with probably the most silent fans I've ever heard of is this Corsair QX120 RGB starter kit. Probably the best option I've ever tried for the price point. I give that one an A+. The Corsair one is a lot more expensive, but I'm sure it's also a little bit higher quality, but more simplistic software here. This is Eric of Nutbiosh Tech and Reviews. Thanks for watching and have yourselves a most wonderful day.